why don't we get started? Um, because we do have a, a lot to talk about. Well, I have a lot, of, lot to share about our Master of Financial Innovation and Technology program. So good afternoon, everyone. I am Roshan Udit. I'm the Assistant Director of the Master of Financial Innovation and Technology program, also known as our MFIT program. We run this, we, we run this program uh, with my colleague, Ryan Riordan, who is the Academic Director of the program. He's also a distinguished professor of finance and the Director of Research at our Institute for Sustainable Finance at Queen's University. At Smith, we've been educating business leaders for more than a century. And we've really kept our finger on the pulse to see what industry needs. So as you may know, our commerce program, for example, has been around for more than 100 years. Um, and we've developed a suite of professional programs beyond our MSc and PhD programs in uh, MMA, um, in uh, innovation and entrepreneurship, uh, artificial intelligence, et cetera. And so right now we've, we've done that, we've engaged in that same um, exercise and we found that there's a gap, there's an opportunity. So we're presenting um, an educational solution that's the first of its kind. I have lots of people who speak the language of business and I have no problem finding software engineers who speak the language of technology, but I can't find translators who speak both languages. This was a testimonial from the CEO of McKenzie & Co. in July 2017. A consistent refrain from employers is the growing need for experts with an understanding of the fundamentals of finance and skills in data science and machine learning. With the rapid, rapid advance of fintech, blockchain, automated investing, and digital capital markets, this demand continues to grow and grow. Our MFIP program will fill these skills gaps. Jennifer Reynolds is the president and CEO of the Toronto, of Toronto Finance International. She's also a member of our advisory board. And she had this to say, the pace of technological change in the financial services industry has never been greater. As a result, the need for talent that can help accelerate innovation is critical to the success of every organization. The Smith MFIT program is designed to build a pipeline of skilled talent to fill these jobs, which will drive the success of the sector and its, and its critical contribution to the Canadian economy. So let's talk about the foundations of our program. It's, it involves data science, machine learning, and financial technology. Well, what is financial innovation and technology anyway? To help us, for, help us understand this, let's delve further and ask a few more questions. Where can we invest or lend? Data science can help us answer this. What are the risks and returns? That's about financial analysis. How can we do this better, cheaper, and or faster? Machine learning can help us with this. And how can we automate and employ technology to support decision-making? FinTech can help us with this. So it really is about technology and finance. More specifically, it's about knowing how new data science and machine learning tools and methodologies work. And it's also being able to apply, these, apply those technologies to processes such as loan pricing, derivative trading, hedging and pricing, risk management, asset management, valuation, so mergers and acquisitions, bonds, portfolios, real estate, et cetera. Et cetera. And it's also about the prediction of macroeconomic trends. Let's take a look at our program structure. It really is theory with practical application. We provide extensive coverage of the fundamental mathematical and statistical theories and methods, but with a practitioner focus in technology. So our students learn financial theory and how to apply that theory to real world decision-making. Our students develop power skills such as strategy, innovation, entrepreneurship. So that's innovation within the organization that you may currently be working in as well as entrepreneurship, teamwork, business acumen, analytic capabilities, leadership, and communication skills. Our evaluations include exams, assignments, team projects, and presentations. And just as in the real world, in the, in the financial, in, uh, financial services uh, industry, we are, this program is a very team-based program. So you'll, you'll be working with your teams from the beginning of, a program, of the program up until the end of the program, and approximately 50% of your coursework is based off of uh, team-based assignments, projects, et cetera. Let's take a closer look at our courses. 
So they typically, they do fall in two, two buckets. You can categorize these as techni technical and financial courses and analytic courses. So with, with respect to the former, uh, there, you'll take a course in creating new ventures, designing digital innovation, banking disrupted, crypto economics and payments, digital capital markets, automated investing, financial data privacy and security, which is, as you may know, is increasing, increasingly becoming more and more important. A team-based project course where you'll develop an innovative in-house solution for an organization or a startup or create a startup, and corporate finance and financial statement analysis. And the, the, this last one is, is, is more of your typical traditional finance course. With respect to analytic courses, um, we have a course on AI ethics and policy, uh, which is increasingly becoming more and more important as AI is developed more so. The acquisition and management of data, introduction to analytic modeling, predictive modeling, machine learning, and AI techniques. And Smith, uh, just so that you would know, is, uh, has been recognized uh, and, re and received the 2020 UPS George D. Smith Prize. And this award recognizes excellence in preparing students to become practitioners of operations research and analytics. And so, as you know, and as I mentioned, because our program is not just finance and it's not just innovation and technology, it's an amalgam of both, analytics, AI, and machine learning are very important uh, pieces of our program. And so, as I've mentioned, um, analytics is important. And so our students will be required to know uh, programming languages and tools such as Python, SQL, R, SAS, Tableau. Um, we, do, we do require that you have some sort of proficiency, some, let's say, approximating intermediate uh, proficiency by the time we start the program. Um, for students who don't have a background in programming, and if they are offered an admission uh, to the pro uh, an admissions offer to the program, we will require that they complete these courses prior to the start of the program, which will be November 1st. And we will set those students up uh, with Udemy courses so that they can complete them online at their own pace. So here is uh, a look at some timelines. So the program will start on November 1st of 2022, that's this year, and it will end next year, uh, next year in 2023. So it is a 14 month program. Um, in November, we will have a residential session closer to the end of the month at Smith Toronto. So that's at Simcoe Place, right next to, uh, right by Union Station. And we'll have a second residential session um, at Goods Hall at Queen's University in Kingston. And this will really be your opportunity to immerse yourself as a student. What's, what does our structure look like in terms of classes? They're held on weeknights and weekends um, throughout our Smith uh, Toronto facility. And students have asynchronous classes of, and self-study options for select courses. So going back to the residential sessions, it really is your opportunity to immerse yourself as a full-time student. It's also an opportunity for you to network and connect with your entire cohort of classmates, program administration, and faculty. At the same time, you'll also be able to connect and learn from um, students from other programs. So for example, students in our Master of Finance program or our Master of Management Analytics program or our Master of Management in Artificial Intelligence program. So we really have a strong ecosystem that allows you to develop extremely, extremely well-developed networks. And because we are at, an, at the intersection of finance and analytics and AI, all those areas that typically would serve or, or be available for students in the finance or analytics programs, all of those opportunities also open up for our students. And of course, uh, you can attend engaging lectures in world-class learning facilities. Speaking about learning, we also have outstanding faculty at Smith. These are world-class management educators in technology, finance, analytics, and artificial intelligence. And they're also industry specialists and practitioners who teach from real world uh, market experience. Some of these include uh, Dr. Elspeth Murray. She's the Associate Professor and Associate Dean of our MBA and Master's programs. She's the Director of the Center for Business Venturing and the CIBC Faculty Fellow in Entrepreneurship. Dr. Stephen Thomas is the direct, Executive Director of our Master of Management Analytics program and the executive director of our Master of Management in Artificial Intelligence program. He's also an adjunct assistant professor. Dr. Lynette Perda is the professor and RBC Fellow of Finance 
and she was recently promoted to being the Associate Dean of our PhD programs. And lastly, we have Dr. Tina, Tina Dason, who is a professor and Stephen J.R. Smith Chair of Strategy and Organizational Behavior, a world-renowned world scholar. I mentioned our advisory board before, wherein Jennifer Reynolds is one of our advisory board members. And our advisory board really works with us hand in hand to make sure that we are providing a curriculum and an education and a program that really serves the needs of of students going into the FinTech space. And some of these members include John Aikman, Zaida Fard, Lael El Hadi, Jonathan Hunter, uh, Dino Trivi Trivisani, and Larry Zalvin, just to name a few. And we also have various uh, engagements and events and activities with them. A few weeks ago, we had a virtual pub night with our advisory board with, with our outgoing cohort and our current cohort. And it was an amazing event. We had an opportunity to learn from these well-established individuals, and they continue to work with us to support our students. In addition to our advisory board and the other resources that I've mentioned, we have a robust career center that helps our students on the professional, at the professional level. And so as soon as you enter our program, our, we, we take a three-phased approach to supporting you in achieving your professional objectives. And so we start off by, by discovering your strengths and your career options. So we try to figure out who are you right now? Where do you wanna go? And we do, the, we, we do this engagement by um, conducting self-assessments, uh, providing you with online resources and career coaching. Once we're done with this, then we'll help you build your skills and personal brand. So we'll provide resources with uh, pertaining to market and technical preparation, mock interviews, personal brand and profile development, networking opportunities, and developing your communication skills. And lastly, we help you launch you uh, into the career that you want to be in. This can, this can be moving up uh, in, your current, uh, in your current work or in your current organization, or it could be starting a FinTech company or moving into uh, a new role. And so we do this by providing you with job search opportunities or, and support uh, recruitment events and activities. And we also offer uh, evaluation and negotiation de uh, skills development, and we help you with onboarding. Um, by the time our students are finishing the program, the vast majority of them have, have or will likely have a, a, let's say a job or something that they want to do as the next step. And so for our outgoing cohort, every student who's, who I've spoken to has already um, acquired a new role that, they want, that they've been wanting to be in. We're also recognized by the Vector Institute. Um, so it has been our program has been reviewed by faculty and industry representatives and it's recognized by the Vector Institute as delivering a curriculum that equips its graduates with skills and competencies sought by industry as a complementary program in business. So our, our current cohort, sorry, our current incoming class, for our incoming class that will start in November 1st, um, they are, some of them will be eligible for the Vector Scholarship. Uh, the nomination period is active right now and it will go, um, we, are, we will go up until mid-March in terms of nominations. And so if the, the minimum requirements for this are that you must have a, a 3.7 out of four uh, average for the last two academic years of your undergraduate program. Um, exceptional industry experience can help offset this if you have um, a lower GPA for the latter two years. Um, and if you have any more questions about that, please feel free to get in touch. I'll drop my uh, information um, closer to the, in, into the chat, closer to the end of this chat and uh, this webinar. So beyond our um, the vector scholarship, students have a wide variety of other benefits. Uh, they have these include events to learn about career pathways and projects in AI through our research and careers in AI event series, networking opportunities with the vector community, which encompasses more than a thousand practice, practitioners, researchers, and professionals in AI and career exploration and recruitment focused events, including the annual AI summit and career fair and information sessions with employers. And there are career support activ activities with technical experts to prepare you for your job search or career transition. So these include workshops on building your portfolio. You also have access to Vector's applied internship program where you can contribute to AI and data projects at the Vector Institute and gain applied experience either part-time or full-time. 
And lastly, you can join the Vector Digital Talent Hub, which is a curated job board of AI career opportunities from internships, internships to full-time, including restricted postings, exclusive to members of the Vector community uh, only. And students in our program continuously acquire and receive information about all of these benefits on an ongoing basis from the Vector Institute. We are also the official national business education partner of the Canadian Olympic Committee. Um, so what's great about this is that um, oftentimes some of our students will be uh, former Olympians or Paralympians, and our students have an opportunity to learn from and collaborate with them. Um, and further to our commitment to the Canadian Olympic Committee, we do provide scholarships to current and former uh, Canadian national team, Olympic and Paralympic athletes across our professional graduate programs, including the FIT, our MFIT program. We do have a very large network um, that our students can connect with and learn from. And so these folks are now working and living across the world. The average age of these individuals is 34. Um, they have about 6.3 years of experience on average and about 2.5 years of average management experience, and 35% of, of the class uh, are women. Let's take a look at our current class profile for the MFIT program. The average age is 33. Uh, the average uh, number of work experience uh, is eight years. 34% uh, of our class is female, 61% is male, and 5% non-binary. We do have five international students who have attended and are in the program. Um, Beyond this, our students do represent a wide variety uh, of, uh, or come from a wide variety of countries, including but not limited to China, Ghana, India, Libya, Pakistan, Russia, South Africa, Sudan, and the United Kingdom. And they also represent a, a wide variety of industries, including the automotive sector, consulting, energy, insurance, real estate, software development, and, and web technology, just to name a few. So we really have a very diverse class in terms of um, where people come from um, and their experiences. Talk about the fees, as I'm sure some of you are interested to know what a program like this would, will, will cost in terms of tuition. So for domestic students, the cost is $45,000 uh, and change. For international students, it's $78,000 and change. And these fees cover uh, tuition, books, learning materials, meals and accommodations for residential sessions and all software licenses. And so what happens after a student, uh, an applicant is given uh, an offer um, and they accept the offer, uh, they'll be required to put in a deposit of $2,000 Canadian. And then in the fall, winter and summer, uh, they'll be required to make uh, installment payments uh, as they proceed. Further to this, we do have, um, we have developed new scholarships, uh, merit-based scholarships for uh, individuals who identify as being uh, indigenous, so Canadian uh, indigenous, or, 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 or being a member of the black community, so African American uh, uh, or Canadian, um, or in any sense, um, if they identify as being uh, from, a, from the black community. And keep in mind that these are merit-based scholarships. If you have, if you are, I'm just gonna pause the video for the my my mic here because there's a child who is uh, is crying quite close to me, so I'm just gonna wait and let them calm down for a second. Okay, if you are interested in uh, in learning more about the program or to start your application, please connect with our application advisor Ryan Hill, who is also on the call on the on the webinar right now. Um, he'll help you provide a couple, uh, a preliminary assessment and guide you through the process. Um, and more so, he'll help you build it and present a strong case. We do have rolling admissions. There are not any cutoff dates. That being said, uh, we are actively um, interviewing uh, top candidates right now. Um, and because we do have a limited um, number of seats, um, we will go to, at some point, we will, um, we will fill the class and we will stop recruiting. But if you are interested, I would highly recommend that you start the process as early as you can because there are a wide variety of um, pieces of your application that you'll need to submit. Okay. And uh, to get started with your assessment, email 
mfit at queensu.ca. And I will also drop my email here. So if you have any questions, you can reach out to myself or email uh, Ryan at mfit at queensu.ca and we'll be happy to, uh, to connect with you and provide some more guidance. Okay, I'm just going to check the Q&A and chat to see if there are any questions. Okay. All right, so it looks like we've covered the questions that came up. Uh, are there any other questions um, that you may have about our program, about applications, about the student experience, anything at all, feel free. Uh, we're happy to answer those questions for you. Thank you, Ryan, for uh, sharing that link. Okay, so I do not see any more uh, questions in the chat or in the Q&A. So I will say that I think we have answered all of the questions via our, uh, our presentation today. As I've mentioned, if you are interested in, in starting the program and uh, starting your application, um, go and visit that website that Ryan has just posted. The curriculum um, Alvaro is provided online. So you can see all of the courses that you'll be taking um, uh, at, in the program. So if you go to the MFIT page on, the, on, our, on our Smith website, you'll be able to see that. Thank you, Ryan. Yep, Serbit, absolutely. Um, okay. Uh, Serbit, your, your question partially cut off. I don't see it there. Uh, but if you want to type it in again, I'm happy to um, answer that for you. Sir, so, have we answered your question or are you still typing away? <laughs> there you go. Okay, so for, for an international student, will there be any assistance provided in terms of a part-time job? So we, we don't provide part-time jobs as a, a, as a part of the program, but we do provide you with uh, various opportunities where you can acquire part-time work um, we have a robust career center, which lists a wide variety of um, opportunities for our students, um, whether they're part-time or full-time. Um, given the type of work, the student visa that st international students get, you'll likely be uh, only able to work part-time, as is generally the case. Uh, but absolutely, part-time options uh, for work are available. Um, and one thing that I do like to say to our students is, Finding a job um, through our program is not something that our students really should be concerned about. Um, our robust career center really works with you hand in hand to make sure that you can acquire a role or, or move forward in the direction that you want on the professional level. So I hope that helps uh, to a bit. Another question for international students, how many months of post-work permit will an international student get post a course? Okay, so this really depends on the, the officer who, who confirms your visa upon arrival. Um, and so it really and truly depends. Um, and there, there's no actual set time frame for what that would look like or how many months that would be. It really does depend. Um, we do have an international, advise, uh, international student advisor who can provide more guidance on this front. I'm happy to connect you with that person for a bit if you'd like, but they will, with regards to your question, they will likely tell you what I've just said right now. Um, it really does depend on who that immigration officer is when you enter the country. 
You're welcome, Sergey. Any other questions uh, from anybody else? You're welcome, Alvaro. So I don't see any more coming into the chat or Q and A. So I'll let you go. <laughs> okay, feel free to serve it. A lot of, oftentimes um, there's some questions regarding um, fees, curriculum, all that type of stuff. We try to provide as much information uh, on our website. Um, so if, you, if you'd like, um, feel free to browse on our website. Um, and I believe Ryan has posted that previously. And you can see a lot of the details that we have there. Um, and if you'd like, you can, you can contact myself, you can contact Ryan, we're all happy to uh, to, to provide more information and more details. Okay, so another question, I believe there are a number of sectors this course will open, sectors this course will open up. Can you tell me of the companies previous two batches have gotten placed to, to get some perspective? Yeah, absolutely. So um, some of our students are, there, there are, there are some banks here in Canada, so for example, Scotiabank, RBC, et cetera, where some of our students are, are working in already and they're moving up as a result of the program or they were in another role and they're moving towards um, uh, a new role in, in these banks. A lot of our students are also in, 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 um, in private equity, for example, and wealth fund management. And sometimes they will transition to that. Um, some, some of our students will end up starting their own firms. Um, that being said, some of our current students also already have their own firms. Um, and they are looking to come into the program to, to acquire more knowledge to serve their clients better. So it really does depend on, on, on you, right? It depends on where you want to go. Um, as you may recall from the list of the courses that I, that I shared with you, you, know, you, can, you can do anything from uh, working in technology, starting your, your own FinTech, working in blockchain, working in banking, insurance, et cetera. So there are a wide variety of options available to our students. And it really does depend on what you want out of the program and where you want to go. And what we try to do is we try to help you get there uh, by uh, providing you with the resources that I mentioned through our career center. So it's that three phased approach that we take. Um, but we, we, have an active, uh, we have active relationships with some of the top, um, let's say consulting firms. So the big four, the banks, um, wealth, fund, uh, wealth funds, et cetera, that, that have openings and they share these openings with us. Um, there are also a wide variety of recruitment events and activities where you can come and meet with employers and talk to them about their opportunities that they have available right now. Uh, I'm currently working uh, with RBC to develop um, some, some sort of a, of, a, of a, let's say, fireside uh, chat series to, to talk about some of the innovations and changes that are taking place in banking, for example, as a result of the rapid growth of, of uh, let's say, technology in general, but you know, AI, machine learning, et cetera, and blockchain. And so what we're seeing right now, and we're a bit, we're a bit um, I don't want to say behind, but in the States, in the US, they've already progressed in terms of taking things um, at the banking level and making things as, as much, uh, or making them more digital uh, as they can. And so what we're seeing right now is that trend trickling down here or trickling up here in Canada and some of our, uh, our, our bigger banks are now um, initiating projects um, where they're taking everything um, uh, to the digital platform. And this is beyond the retail level. This is also um, at the investment level, for example, right? So you can see this across the board um, and that's why uh, our program is becoming very popular. Um, because what will happen in the future is that what we say is fintech right now, or what we say is the future of finance uh, and innovation right now, will become the norm in the next few years. 
Um, so that's a long-winded way of answering your questions a bit, but I hope that provides you some perspective. Uh, any more, Servit, or anyone else? Going once, going twice. All right, you're welcome, Servit. So let's let's call that a session, a, a, a seminar. Um, oh, actually, there's one more. There's one more, and I, I do want to make sure I answer this one. How can students with around five years of financial services experience in corporate finance prepare themselves before the start of the program? So, you know, there, there are a wide variety of ways to prepare yourself. Um, but what we do is six months before the start of the program, we start to onboard our students. Okay. And what, we, what I mean by that is we start to provide you with information, tools, resources. Um, we, we get you connected to um, the different units and departments um, that will, will help you at the professional level and at the academic level. At the same time, um, we set you up with courses on Udemy if you don't have that programming background to make sure that you are well-equipped and have that knowledge before the start of the program. And so, so to really answer your question, um, we actually get in touch with you in advance to make sure that we help you prepare for the program. So that happens approximately five to six months before the start of the program. So I, I would say for anyone who's, who's admitted to the program, just, just keep your eye out for when we connect with you on that front. If you wanted to, to do more digging, I would start looking at the different aspects of what FinTech really entails. It's a, you know, it's, when you look at the, uh, at the Venn diagram of finance, AI, and analytics, we find FinTech in, in the middle at that intersection. But because it is at the intersection, it involves AI and analytics, it also involves um, finance, but it also involves things such as crypto and um, blockchain and all these other things that are coming out in the financial sector. So it, it would be helpful, I guess, for you to just start to you know, look more into it, read some books about it, watch some videos about it. There's some free courses on Udemy, on Coursera, et cetera. So those things would be recommended. But like I said, we do connect with you in advance of the program to make sure that we can provide you with those onboarding pieces so that you're ready to hit the ground running when the program starts. All righty. Excellent. I'm glad to hear that, Servit. And like I said, you can connect with myself or Ryan, but I would highly encourage you to start um, your application as soon as you can. We are actively uh, interviewing our top candidates. Um, and like I said, we do have rolling admissions, but we do have a, a finite number of seats available. Um, and so if you are interested in securing your seat, I would recommend uh, starting your application uh, sooner rather than later. So thanks, uh, thanks very much everyone for your interest in our MFIT program at Smith and Queens University. Feel free to connect with us if you have any more questions and we'll be happy to connect with you uh, moving forward. Thank you and have an excellent day. Bye.